Despite finishing with the top record in all of baseball and looking like the best team in the league for a majority of the season, the Cleveland Guardians World Series hopes rely on this one game. If they win, they're moving on to the ALCS, and if they lose, then their season is over. The ALDS has been really close and exciting so far with the Guardians and Tigers splitting the first four games. And it all comes down to this here in game number five. This is just like last year when Cleveland was the number two wild card. They upset the Yankees in the ALDS, obviously went on to win the World Series. And now Cleveland has kind of swapped spots. They're the big juggernaut, and now the Tigers are coming for them. So Cleveland knows what it's like to be in this position. Game three in Detroit, the Guardians won 6-3, to three, and then game four, we got slaughtered, losing 9-1. to one. Eric Haas homered three times in that game for the Tigers. Diemi Odiemi homered twice as well. The offense has been very inconsistent, I feel like, and in the last episode, it was mostly not good. In game three, we did not hit the ball well, minus the fifth inning, in which we scored five runs. And then in Game 4, the offense was a complete no-show. So that's three out of four games where the offense has been pretty bad. The pitching's been very up and down as well. So hopefully we can really pitch well here in Game 5. We've got our ace, Shane Bieber, on the mound. Bieber has a big track record of postseason success. And we're going to be counting on him again here to keep our season alive. This is not the only ALDS game going to five. The Astros and Blue Jays also have a game five ahead of them. So there are still four teams alive in the American League, and there will only be two left in about half an hour. Here's a look at both lineups. The Guardians going with their regular group. Keep in mind, the Tigers are starting a lefty, so Cleveland had to make their lineup strategically. Here is Shane Bieber, who pitched in game one of this series. He took the loss, allowing four runs in five innings. He really didn't pitch all that well, and obviously the Guardians are hoping that he will look better today, or else, well, their season could be over. Raymond Prince leads us off, and Prince starts with a bang! A homer into deep left field. Well, that's one way to get the game started. The Detroit Tigers take a 1-0 lead in the first at-bat of the game. Raymond Prince with his first career postseason home run, and... Obviously, the Guardians want to start the game strong. They want to set the tone, and that is not how you do it. Allowing a first at bat home run to the leadoff man, and already Detroit is in a good spot. Just one at bat into this game, and that was a no doubter, too. That wasn't even close. Well over 400 feet. Prince knew it was gone as soon as it hit the bat. Just a beautiful swing. Great everything. From the young second baseman, Raymond Prince. And now Shane Bieber is going to need to respond. Facing off against Riley Green. Only hitting 143 so far in the playoffs. But Green hits that one into left for a base hit. So now the Tigers get their first two runners aboard. And we'll see if they can add some more runs. Spencer Torkelson draws a walk. I know this game just started, but it is quickly trending downhill for the Guardians. Joey Gallo grounds to first. Bell over to Marte. Back to Bell. A huge 3-6-3 double play. Now Green advances to third, so he can score here. But now there are two outs, and the Tigers are going to need a base hit to do so. From Javi Baez, who strikes out on the circle change. All things considered, that inning could have gone a lot worse, but it also could have gone a lot better as the Tigers lead 1-0. Here's a look at Tariq Skubal, who pitched in game one of this series. He pitched pretty well. Four innings, did not allow a run. I don't know why they took him out so soon. But obviously they won the game as Pena gets hit by the pitch. So Skubal already plunking batters. As that'll bring up Ramon Romero, the lefty killer. He goes down looking on the fastball. Romero, of course, hitting high in the lineup because he rakes against lefties. You can tell Marte also rakes against lefties. A no doubt about it. Home run into straightaway center field. Not to mention a nice bat flip as well. And the Guardians take a 2-1 lead. Cattell Marte drills that one 450 feet into center field. An absolute nuclear missile by Cattell Marte. Another guy who hits lefties so, so well with his second home run of the postseason. 
Cattell Marte has always played well in the playoffs for Cleveland, dating back to season number two. And here he is making another big play here in the first inning of this game. The Tigers were really gaining some momentum to start this game. And then, boom, it snapped away with one swing of the bat. And now the Guardians are ahead. And there's still only one out in this first inning. That'll bring up the American League MVP, Jose Ramirez, who also has been doing very well here in the postseason. But he goes down on the check swing on the circle change. Good pitch by Scooball. That'll bring up Kyle Lewis, who has not done so well here in the playoffs. Lewis skies this one into right field. It should be caught at the warning track, and it is. So a pretty good offensive start for both teams. Raymond Prince with the solo home run for the Tigers, and Cattell Marte one upset with a two-run shot of his own as the Guardians lead 2-1 going into the second. Connor Scott leads it off for the Tigers, and he swings and misses on the slider. Shane Bieber seems to be getting a little bit more comfortable after his rough start. That'll bring up the catcher, Keith Barrett Ruiz. He's going to pop this one into the shallow infield. Bieber should be under it to make the easy play, which he does. And now it seems like things are starting to go a little bit more normal for Shane Bieber after allowing the first three batters to reach base. Diemi Odiemi now up, skies it in the left. Kyle Lewis should make the play. A quick and easy 1-2-3 inning for the Shane Train as Cleveland holds on to their 2-1 lead going into the bottom of the second. We'll see if the Guardians offense can keep things going here as we start with Josh Bell, who has not hit against lefties well this year. But since it's Game 5, Cleveland wants their best guys out on the field, although Bell does go down looking to start the inning. That'll bring up Jesus Sanchez, hitting a measly 118 in the postseason. And his average will not go up as he grounds out to second. Prince makes the play. Sanchez with just two hits through the first four games against the Tigers. That'll bring up former Tigers prospect Eliezer Alfonso, who of course won the World Series MVP last year. And he rips a single into left field. Great swing by the young catcher, Alfonso. So now there's a runner here aboard for Zane Rowley, Mr. Clutch. Base hit in the right. So now there's two on and two away. A huge opportunity for Alvaro Pena back at the top of the order. The 19-year-old third baseman who got hit by pitch in his first at bat. And he hits it into right for a single. The bases are now loaded as Alfonso stays at third. Probably the smart call. He would have been out by a mile. So a huge opportunity here for the lefty killer, Ramon Romero, who hit 345 in the regular season. His splits against lefties even better. He has been outstanding since the all-star break here for the Guardians. The 2-2, swinging a miss. So the Guardians leave the bases loaded. Romero had a huge opportunity to make a play, and he does not. Tariq Skubal fired up as it remains a two-on ball game going into the third. Isaac Paredes leads it off for the Tigers. Hits it in the right. Going to be a close play, and it is caught. Zane Rowley with a diving grab for the first out of the inning. The 20-year-old Dutch outfielder continues to be a very good playoff performer. We saw it last year, and he's continued it this year on defense and at the plate. Great defense by young Zane Rowley. That'll bring us back to the top of the order. Raymond Prince homered in his first at bat. This time he grounds to first. Josh Bell quickly tags the base for the second out of the inning. Shane Bieber has now retired seven consecutive batters. He looks a lot better than he did to start the game. And then Riley Green's going to fly this one into center. Jesus Sanchez slowly gets to it, but he makes the play. Another 1-2-3 inning from Shane Bieber. Much more characteristic from him these last two innings after a slow start. Into the bottom of the third, here's Cattell Marte. Hit a two-run homer in his last at bat. This time he grounds it to first. Torkelson makes the play. The shift proves to be a success there for the Tigers as they get the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez, the 3-2 pitch from Scooball, and that pitch is well outside for ball four. So Ramirez will take his base. Jose Ramirez has drawn a ton of walks in this series. The Tigers do not feel comfortable with pitching to him, and I don't really blame them. That'll bring up Kyle Lewis, who hits this one high and deep into center field. It is gone! Two-run homer for Kyle Lewis, and the Guardians extend their lead as it's now 4-1. A 427-foot home run for Lewis, his first career postseason home run. Lewis had never played in the playoffs in his career prior to this season. Poor guy was stuck in Seattle for the first five years of his career, so that's why he's never played in the playoffs. A great swing there by Lewis, who really has not played all that well in this postseason series against Detroit, so it's really good to see him making a play there. And now the Guardians lead this one by three. 
I know the opening start of this game was pretty rough for Cleveland, but now things are really starting to go their way. Still plenty of ball left to be played, however, as that'll bring up Josh Bell. He goes down looking on the fastball for the second out of the inning. It is still really good to see the offense completely showing up here in their biggest game of the season, but they will not add any more runs here in the third as Jesus Sanchez pops it up. It is caught in front of second base by Raymond Prince. But another good inning for the Guardians. They had two more with the two-run homer by Kyle Lewis as we go into the fourth. Spencer Torkelson leads it off. He rips it into center field. Back at the track at the wall. It's off the top of the wall. That'll be a double for Torkelson. And he's actually going to try to head for third. And he's going to be safe. So it's a triple, excuse me, for Spencer Torkelson. Runner 90 feet away from home. And now the hitless streak for the Tigers comes to a close. And they will quickly drive him in. Gallo singles into center. So it's now 4-2. The Tigers offense has awoken after a hibernation since the first inning. And they're now only down by two. That'll bring up Javi Baez. Hits it into right. Rally will not make the play. That was right in his glove. How did he not catch that? I mean, come on, dude. You got to hang in there. It's like I'm watching Jalen Rager highlights for crying out loud. Catch the damn ball. Again, Rally, as we look at the replay, he literally had it in his glove. He made a great catch in the last inning but drops a snow corner right there. Two on, nobody out for Connor Scott. He flies it into center. Sanchez should be able to make the play, trying to position himself to try to throw the runner Gallo out at third, but the throw is a little bit offline. So there's now one away, runners on the corners, a big opportunity for Kibert Ruiz, the young catcher. He grounds this one, past the glove of Ramon Romero for a base hit. And it is now only a one-run game. Four to three, your score. Detroit with their second run of the inning, and they still have two aboard, but still only one out. Diemi Odiemi draws a walk, and the bases are loaded. Double play ends the inning, but a base hit or two can really open this game up for the Tigers. Isak Paradis flies this one into right. Rowley makes the catch. Baez will look to tag up from third. He is safe, and the Tigers have tied it up at four. A three spot here in the fourth inning for Detroit to put themselves back in the game, but they're not done yet. Raymond Prince singles into center. That should score another run, making it a 5-4 ball game. Good throw by Sanchez, but Ruiz is safe at the plate. Got to assume there might be some bullpen action because Shane Bieber is getting rocked, and it's not going to get any better. Riley Green with a mood shot into right center field. It goes into the Cleveland bullpen for a three-run homer. And it is now 8-4 to four in favor of the Tigers. Detroit has scored seven runs here in the fourth inning. Shane Bieber looks discombobulated right now. I don't know how Cleveland can justify keeping him in this ballgame because he has gotten rocked in this inning. Unsurprisingly, manager Giovanni Cabrera will come in to take him out. Shane Bieber is the ace of his staff. He's the guy who's supposed to perform in the playoffs. And in today's game, three and two-thirds innings, eight runs allowed. So his day is done. His season possibly done as well if Cleveland is not able to come back today as Nick Sandlin will check into the game. Cleveland has tried to save as many of their bullpen arms as possible. Once they were getting blown out in game four, they turned to the lawn reliever Ryan Weathers. So all of Cleveland's relievers should have enough energy to produce today, although that's not a good start. Spencer Torkelson, who started off the inning with his triple, now singles into center. That'll bring up the 11th batter of the inning, Joey Gallo, who singles into right. The Tigers' offense is completely exploding. Everything that could go wrong in this inning for Cleveland has gone wrong. That'll bring up Baez, who, in Javier Baez fashion, swings at a pitch well out of the zone. But holy cow, that inning was a disaster. The Tigers score seven runs, and they lead it 8-4. to four. Cleveland's offense has played really well today, but they've got a lot of damage control to do with just six innings left to save their season. That starts with Eliezer Alfonso. It's this one high and deep into center field. Green nears the track, but it is caught for the first out of the inning. We need these young guys to really step up, to really play their best baseball. And Zane Rowley draws a walk. Rowley has now reached base twice today. That'll bring up Alvaro Pena, who also has reached base twice in this game. But he'll ground into an inning ending 6-4-3 double play. And now Cleveland is down by four through four. Let's go into the fifth inning. 
Connor Scott leads it off for the Tigers, and there's another hit. He singles in to left. The 11th base hit of the day for the Tigers, and to put that into perspective, Cleveland has only gotten 12 outs. So Sandlin is taken out of the game. He'll be replaced by Camilo Duvall, who has performed very well so far in the postseason. He has not allowed a run yet to this point in three games, but Kiebert Ruiz has plans to change that. Ruiz with a moonshot into right field, and this game has turned from bad to worse. A two-run homer for Kiebert Ruiz, 446 feet, a no-doubter as soon as it hit the bat. And it is now a 10-4 lead for the Detroit Tigers. This game is getting ugly quick. And Cleveland's going to need a huge comeback to keep their season alive, pretty much. Diemi Odiemi goes down on the slider for the first out of the inning. We know Camilo Duvall's got some nasty stuff. He's got to continue to show it off here as Paredes lines out to right. Caught by Zane Rowley for the second out of the inning. Then I'll bring up Raymond Prince, who goes down on the fastball. So Duvall does allow a run. Sandlin technically allowed the other, since he's the one who led up the base runner. Making it 10-4 here in the bottom of the fifth. Ramiro leads it off for the Guardians. He's 0-2 as he flies out to center, caught by Green. I was hoping to see more out of Ramon Ramiro today. He's been pretty underwhelming now, 0-3. At least he put the bat to the ball that time, unlike his first couple at bats. Ketel Marte weakly pops this one up into the shallow infield. Spencer Torkelson is under it for the second out of the inning. Cleveland's offense has not done anything since Detroit went on their big run. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez now, the 1-2. He gets plucked. So Scooball has now hit two batters today. Ramirez is aboard. That'll bring up Kyle Lewis, who homered in his last at bat. Another homer would be pretty nice right about now. But instead, he pops this one up, barely going forward. It is caught by Kibert Ruiz. So we are now five innings down, and the Guardians are down big. 10-4 to four your score here, going into the sixth. Can Cleveland pull off this big comeback, or will their season prematurely come to a close? Bruce Dark Gratterall is in for the Guardians. He'll face off against Riley Green to start the inning. And Green gets that one past the diving glove of Ramiro for a base hit. Good effort on defense, but... The Tigers are just continuing to get base runners at will. Torkelson hits this one into shallow foul territory. Josh Bell should be able to easily make the play, which he does for the first out of the inning. Bruce Dark Gratterall has been a slightly underwhelming trade deadline pickup, so it'd be nice to see him do well about now, or maybe not. I shouldn't have jinxed him. Joey Gallo with a two-run homer. This game has turned from bad to disastrous to catastrophic, and it is now 12-4. That'll bring up Baez, grounds out to Pena for the second out of the inning. Close play, good hustle by Javi Baez. Still, you got to feel very anxious if you're a Cleveland fan. They're going to need at least eight runs in order to win this game. That's a very tall task, and that also requires the pitching to step up, which they have not today. Connor Scott draws a walk. Kibert Ruiz pops out to short. You can tell Marce under it. He should be able to make the play, which he does. The story with this Cleveland team throughout the year has been how good the offense is and how inconsistent the pitching is. And right now, the inconsistent pitching is definitely catching up to them. So Scooball is taken out of the game. He'll be replaced by James Paxton, who starts off here against Josh Bell. Keep in mind, Paxton is a lefty as Bell hits this one high and deep in a left field. Go ball, go see ya. It is gone. Cleveland has to start a rally at some point, right? It's now or never, and I suppose that's a start. A solo home run for Josh Bell. I know he doesn't hit lefties well, but he still has plenty of pop in that bat, and it's good to see him making a play. So it's now 12-5. Cleveland cuts the lead to 7. That home run is like the Chris Paul meme where he hits the big 3 to cut the lead to 40. Yeah, this is pretty much the baseball equivalent of that. But again... Better late than never, am I right? We might as well get something going. We're not going to go out without a fight. And Sanchez homers into right. Back-to-back -back home runs for Cleveland. Are the Guardians going to make this a game? It's now 12-6. I know the Guardians still have a long way to go. But again, this team is not going to quit. So Sanchez with a blast-off. Sick bat flip, no doubter. I know Jesus Sanchez has been pretty bad throughout the entirety of the postseason, but it's good to see him finally showing up here. He seems a little too excited, though. We're still down by six, buddy. Let's not... 
I mean, let's not, you know, hold hands in a circle and sing kumbaya yet. We still have a long ways to go. But this is a really good start to the inning. That'll bring up Eliezer Alfonso, who will not make it three home runs in a row. It has the height, but it does not have the distance, as it is caught out and right for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Zane Rowley, who draws another walk, his second of the game. Rowley has reached base all three at-bats today. He has been fantastic, minus his drop in right field, which I guess in hindsight directly led to the Tigers scoring seven runs. Alvaro Pena singles in to right, so the base runners keep on coming. Cleveland's offense is on fire to start this inning. Now that'll bring up Ramon Ramiro, 0 for 3 today. Can he finally get a base hit here? He does not. He flies out to center. Rowley's going to look to tag up to third. He is safe. So now there's runners on the corners, two away. A huge opportunity for Cattell Marte, who hits lefties better than anybody in baseball. He's a better clutch hitter than anybody in baseball. This is his time to shine. Marte hits that one into center field. It one hops off the wall. One run scores. Pena looking to join him. It's a two-run double for Cattell Marte. I know Cleveland still has a long ways to go, but they are making this game interesting as it is now 13-8. So James Paxton's out of the game. He'll be replaced by Daniel Norris. Another lefty. The Tigers are still sticking with the lefties. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez, and he swings at a pitch he really shouldn't have. But a really good inning, though. Cleveland scores four, and they're now only down by four. It's good to see the offense continuing to fight. If the pitching's going to do nothing, the only way we can win this game is by hitting the ball. Dylan Tate comes into the game here in the seventh. He's allowed one run so far here in three and two-thirds innings in the postseason as the Tigers just keep him coming. Diemi Odiemi with a blast off into straightaway center field. Cleveland's pitching hasn't been inconsistent today. It has been horrible today. Absolutely dreadful. Detroit now has 13 runs on the scoreboard. I mean, my God, has the Guardians pitching been a total train wreck today. And shout out to the Tigers offense for really producing. But right when we get some good things going on offense, we give one back. And now the Guardians are back down by five. Great swing by Odiemi, who homered twice in Game 4. He's already back to it here in Game 5, 450 feet. Odiemi has some unfinished business with this team. Remember, he was on the Rockies last year, who lost to Cleveland in the World Series. Isaac Paredes flies out to right, caught by Rowley for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Raymond Prince, 2 for 4 with the home run. He flies it into center. Sanchez will waltz over to it. And it is caught for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Riley Green, who has been disappointing in this playoff series, but has been really good today. Three for four with some nice defensive plays. Broken bat, dribbler to third. Pena with a barehanded throw, and it is not in time. Riley Green with his fourth hit of the day, and the Tigers have another base runner for Torkelson. Oh my God, what a catch! Alvaro Pena leaping into the air. To make the grab, Pena's a small guy, sub six foot. I'm pretty sure he's 5'11". I've got to ask what his max vertical jump is because after seeing that, it might start with the number four. Let's go to the bottom half of the inning. Five run lead for Detroit. Gregory Soto is in for the Tigers. The lefty, again, another lefty. The Tigers have had four pitchers today and they're all lefties. Kyle Lewis draws a walk. Again, just got to start the inning strong, get some base runners and hope to drive them in. Cleveland scored four in the last inning, so hopefully they can keep it up as Josh Bell also draws a walk. 2-1, nobody out for Jesus Sanchez, who homered in his last at bat, swings at an outside slider, which he should not have swung at, for the first out of the inning. So from there, the Tigers make a pitching change. They weren't pleased with how Soto was doing, so the righty Kendall Graveman will come into the game, facing off against Eliezer Alfonso. He hits that one high and well, deep in the center field. Green at the track, at the wall, it is caught. He might have robbed that. I'm not really sure. That was close as Kyle Lewis advances to third. So there's now runners on the corners and two away for Zane Rowley. Mr. Clutch, can he get another big play here? The 2-2. Two -two. Rowley, base hit in the left center field. Run scores, it's now 13-9. The Cleveland offense continues to play so well today. These guys absolutely deserve to win this game, but if only they didn't allow 13. Pena flies out to center, caught by Riley Green. 
So the Tigers add one in the top of the inning. Cleveland adds one in the bottom half of the inning. But we're still down by four with only two innings to go and still a lot of work that needs to be done. James Karinchak checks into the game here in the eighth inning. He has pitched in two postseason innings so far and is not allowed a run. So hopefully he can keep it going as Joey Gallo thought that was ball four. The umpire behind the plate says otherwise. Gallo draws a walk on the very next pitch, so it doesn't end up mattering. This time Gallo gets his way. Kind of a nice little FU to the umpire as Baez flies out to left, caught by Lewis, who overthrows the shortstop Marte. It doesn't really matter as he gets it to Ramiro instead. That'll bring up Connor Scott, who hits this one high and deep in the left. Lewis chases after it, and he makes the catch. Good play by Kyle Lewis for the second out of the inning. We'll see if Karen Check can finish the frame off for good as he faces off against Keith Barrett Ruiz. He's going to fly it in the left. Pretty busy inning for Kyle Lewis as he comes down with it. That's the first inning since the third where the Tigers didn't score. That's kind of embarrassing, not going to lie. But hey, nobody scored in that inning. So hopefully Cleveland can, you know, continue to keep this rally going here in the bottom of the eighth against the righty Tony Gonsolin, who has not allowed a run so far here in the playoffs as he'll start with the pinch hitter Josh Naylor hitting for Ramon Ramiro. Grounds it up the middle. Baez makes the play. And the Tigers are five outs away from moving on to the ALCS. That'll bring him Cattell Marte. Homered earlier in the game, lines it in a right, and that's going to drop for a hit. So Marte is aboard. Again, all you got to do is get some base runners and get some big-time hits from these big-time players, like the MVP, Jose Ramirez. The 2-2, swinging a miss as he swings at a pitch well out of the zone. And what could be the final at bat for the MVP it ends in a strikeout. That'll bring up Kyle Lewis now. The 2-1 pitch. Lewis hits that one well up the middle into center for a hit. Marte on his high horse. He heads to third. Kyle Lewis has had a pretty good game, all things considered. With him not playing well early in the playoffs, it's good to see him playing well along with the rest of the offense. Huge opportunity here for Josh Bell. With runners on the corners as he fouls it off. That pitch was right down the middle. That was his pitch. And he just mistimed it couple pitches later, it remains 1-2. Runners on the corners, two away. 13-9 is your score. As Bell checks a swing. You gotta swing the bat, buddy. So Cleveland scores nobody in the eighth. One more inning to go. The Guardians are down by four. It's not a save situation, but they figured they might as well throw their best relief pitcher, Emmanuel Classe, into the game as he strikes out Diemi Odiemi for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Isaac Paredes. Flies it into right. Zane Rowley is under it, and he will haul it in for the second out of the inning. Good work here from Classe as Raymond Prince strikes out on the slider. A 1 2 3 inning for Emmanuel Classe, and we head into the bottom of the ninth. This is it. The seven, eight, nine hitters are due up. The Guardians need at least four runs to keep their season alive. Their offense has shown the ability to do it today, but can they? Brian Abreu is in the game for the Tigers. He has allowed three runs in one postseason inning so far. The Guardians hoping they can do even more here as Sanchez swings and misses at the high fastball. You can't be swinging at garbage at this stage in the game. George Valera is in as a pinch hitter for Eliezer Alfonso. And Bell grounds this one up the middle in between the umpire's legs for a base hit. Good at bat off the bench for Valera. He is now aboard, but a ground ball ends the game. That'll bring up Zane Rowley. He's reached base in every at-bat today. Pops it up in the left. Should be caught, and it will be caught. And now the Guardians are down to their final out. That'll bring up the leadoff hitter, Alvaro Pena, just 19 years old and the biggest at-bat of his young life. Pena is 2 for 4, hit by pitch as well, as he watches that one go by. Now 3-1. Disciplined, patient approach here at the plate for the rookie Pena as he draws a walk. Good at bat for Alvaro Pena. Two on, two away. Tyler Wells, the regular closer, is in for the Tigers. And he'll face off against Stansby Swanson, who checked into the game earlier as a defensive substitution. Swanson hits this one high and deep into center field. Green chases after it at the track, at the wall. Go ball, go! It is gone! Three-run homer for Stansby Swanson. And the Guardians cut the lead to one. Swanson was not supposed to get in at bat in this situation, but because of the defensive substitution that the Guardians made an inning prior, he was stuck in the lineup here and capitalizes with a monster home run. 
And now this is a little bit more conceivable. The Guardians are only down by one. A homer into straightaway center field for the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. But Cleveland is still down by one, and they're still down in their final out. So they still need another big play or two to keep their season alive. It's Cattell Marte. The Guardians down in their final strike. The 2-2. That's a tough pitch to lay off, but he does. And now the count is full. Pitch on its way from Wells. And Marte ties it up! A homer in the left field and a bat flip! 13! 13! What is happening? Cattell Marte with the biggest home run of his life to tie it up here in the bottom of the ninth for the Cleveland Guardians. They were down in their final out, three consecutive at-bats. Pena walks, Swanson homers, and now Marte homers to tie the game. This is unbelievable. I cannot believe what I am witnessing right now. Unlike the Swanson home run, that was a no-doubter. Everybody knew it was gone. The bench and the dugout is unsurprisingly fired up. There is not a soul in this stadium currently sitting down. This place is rocking right now off of a 409 oppo home run by Marte. And now Jose Ramirez, the MVP, has a chance to end the game. Good night, everybody! Jose Ramirez is going to walk it off! And the Guardians are moving on! That has to be the most improbable rally I have ever seen. The Guardians were down to their final out on multiple occasions, and the offense comes up big in the bottom of the ninth to somehow keep the season alive. We looked like dead meat throughout this entire game, allowing seven runs in the fourth. At one point, I think in the sixth inning, we were down 12-4, but the offense kept on fighting, and fittingly, in the bottom of the ninth, it's the most valuable player in all of baseball, Jose Ramirez, who wins the game for the Guardians in the craziest ending I think I have ever seen to a major league game in my entire life. Oh my god, what a game, what a finish, and Cleveland season stays alive another day in un believable fashion. What a run to end this game. The three-run homer by Swanson, the solo home run by Marte, and the walk-off by Jose Ramirez. That three at bat sequence will forever live in infamy as an all-time Cleveland sports moment. Holy cow. I, I'm still in shock. My jaw when I first saw Ramirez hit the home run was on the floor for about five minutes. I could not believe what I had seen. I, I can't believe we won. I don't know how we did it. The Tigers offense was awesome today. 16 hits, 13 runs, 7 of course came in the 4th. They didn't get anything going in the last 2 innings, but you cannot blame their offense. They balled out. However, our offense scored one extra run in order to win this game. The offense really for us played well the entire game from start to finish. Obviously, we had four runs in the sixth, and then, of course, our unbelievable rally in the ninth inning with the homers of Swanson, Marte, and Ramirez, not to mention homers earlier in the game from Sanchez, from Marte again, from Lewis, and we had one more from Josh Bell as well. We went deep seven times in this game. Now, the pitching was an utter train wreck. Other than Karen Cech and Klasse, everybody else sucked, and if we had lost this game... I would have had a long talk with the pitchers, but they are lucky that we came up clutch. Of course, the Dansby Swanson home run to cut it to one. The Cattell Marte home run to tie it. And then, of course, Jose Ramirez, the home run to walk it off. One of the all-time great plays in the history of this channel. Wow. The Swanson home run went into straightaway center, and then the other two were total no-doubters. Marte knew it as soon as it was gone with the bat flip. And then Jose Ramirez as well. He knew it too. I don't know how Jose, Jose Ramirez didn't go crazy after that. He acted like he's been there before. 
when that's the biggest home run of his entire life. So, I mean, I just don't know what to say. I'm completely speechless. What a game. What an ending. The Guardian season is staying alive a little bit longer. You got to feel bad for Tyler Wells, who faced off against three batters today. Swanson Homer, Marte Homer, and Ramirez Homer. Those are the three at-bats that Wells had. So we're going to be facing off against the Toronto Blue Jays in the ALCS. They beat the Yankees in extra innings. We thought our game was good. They ended up winning 9-7 to seven in 10 innings. They scored 5 in the top of the 10th. Houston added 3, but they were unable to ultimately win the game. The Astros won 105 games this year. They were better than Toronto throughout the season. But again, as we know, just because the Blue Jays have a significantly worse record does not mean we can take them any lighter. We're going to end the episode here. Oh my lord, what a game. What a thriller. I'm, I'm still speechless. I don't, I don't know what to say. So next episode, we will kick off the ALCS against Toronto. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.